Hi, friends. I am so glad to join you today as we get to explore the Creativity for Kids Sensory Bin. And if you don't have it, that's okay. You can watch and play with us as we take you on an imagination adventure. So without further ado, here is Meredith. Hi, friends. Welcome to our Creativity for Kids Sensory Bin Dinosaur Dig activity today. I'm so happy to be doing this with you. And like Michelle said, if you don't have this kit at home, that's okay. We'll guide you along so you can participate as well. So let's begin with our overhead view and taking a look at what's inside. So on our packaging, you can already see some of the very fun items that is included in our kit. So it looks like there's some fun little scoops and brushes, a magnifying glass, um, some eggs and rocks and sand. So those are all ideas for those who do not have this kit at home. These are items that you might be able to find around the house and you can, um, you can play along. So we'll open up our bin here. nice um, tight fit so you can use this bin as storage when you're done playing so you can just put the top back on but we're not there yet first we're taking a look at what's inside so put this inside and just go through each item as i pull them out of the bag we have a volcano Ooh, and it looks like some very tropical palm trees. We have all of these dinosaurs. One, two, three, four colorful dinosaurs. And then we have a couple dinosaurs that look like they may have become extinct. And three. Cool. All right. Like I mentioned, we have, ooh, that's neat, a magnifying glass. We have some foliage some more tropical plants. Ooh, a big brush for uncovering dinosaur bones. And here is our scoop. And we'll show you how to use that in a little bit. And a very fun dinosaur egg. And that just together. Here's our handy dandy instructions. And finally, we have our racks, actual racks, and our actual sand. And our sand is in two bags just to keep it together until it's time to play. So let's go ahead and take a look at our instructions. It says, have an adult gen gently empty the bag of sand into the bottom of the bin, spread the sand out to cover the surface, and then open and arrange all the other items in the bin. Well, I would like to change that up a little bit and make this really fun activity from the get-go. So we're not gonna put the sand in yet. What we're gonna put in are all of our dinosaurs first. So we're gonna put eight, I think we counted eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven. 
We're going to put all seven of our dinosaurs in first. And then we're going to put some of our racks in. Okay, I put all of our racks in. And now we're going to put in our sand. And you might want to keep this bag because it has um, a little closure on it. So if you do want to take your items out of your bin and keep them together in a different way, you can use that bag to seal them up together. So have some tape on it. You can just cut the tape. And there. We're covering up all of our dinosaurs and our racks. <laughs> oh, this is like real life when archaeologists discover new things underneath the sand. How fun. All right, so we'll put our plants in. We'll put our little volcano in. And this volcano, you can have it standing up like this, or you can have it laying down like that. And the same with our trees too, just like that. Okay, so now the fun begins. What we're gonna do is maybe just kind of use our brush and uncover parts of our dinosaurs just like a real dinosaur did. So this is something um, that actually happens. So they use machines and shovels. And then when they get close to finding a very delicate dinosaur skeleton, they'll use a brush like this so they don't harm the skeleton bones. And so they can be very gentle and remove the skeleton um, so it can then be put in a museum. So then you can go see it in the museum. So this is a fun and it's very relaxing just brushing the sand off of our little dinosaur friends. And Meredith, this is our play sand, correct? Right, and yeah. Not our is sensory sand, right? Correct. Yes, Michelle. So this is just like sand you would find at the beach. It's nice and loose and it's able to be brushed because our sensory sand is a little bit different. Um, it kind of sticks together a little bit so you can mold it where this sand is all dry and it can be brushed away very easily with a, a brush like this. So Good question. Do we have any other questions out there, Michelle? No, not at this time. Oh, good, okay. So if you do have a question, like we said in the beginning, go ahead and just type it in and Michelle can read it to me. So here we go. All right, so that's one way to play with your dinosaurs and this wonderful sand. Another thing you could do, and I'll move our trees out of the way, is you could take your scoop and take one big scoop in here. And you can scoop into the sand and see what you come up with. And it looks like I came up with a dinosaur and a rock. I'll put those guys back in. I'll take another scoop. All right, Michelle and friends out there, how many racks and how many dinosaurs do you think I'll come up with in this scoop? Let's see if you have a, a guess. Will I come up with one dinosaur or two dinosaurs? Let's see, here we go. Oh, 
Well, one dinosaur, one dinosaur, and one rock. Awesome. Now there was another dinosaur that tried to fit in, but he didn't fit. Scoop him up as well. And we have one dinosaur. And we have three rocks. Ooh, wow, this rock is very interesting. It has little rings around it. It's really neat looking. Maybe we can get a closer look with our magnifying glass. Let's see. Can you guys see these rings on this rock? It's really neat. Maybe if I hold the there we go. How about that? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what else can we look at underneath our magnifying glass? Let's see if this dinosaur has teeth. Can you see? I don't think he does. Maybe he only eats plants. Well, I guess you would need teeth for plants too. So he's probably just not smiling with his teeth showing. Let's see what this guy looks like underneath the magnifying glass. Ooh, look at those scales. That's pretty cool. I wonder what those scales were for back in the day of dinosaurs. And what else? How about this guy over here? Oh yeah, he has stripes. If we were to name this dinosaur here, what would we name him? I mean, of course he has a regular name, you know, like Brontosaurus or Tyrannosaurus Rex. But if we wanted to call him, like if we had him as a pet, I'm wondering if my friends out there have a suggestion as to what we would name our pet dinosaur. So if you have a thought, as to what we would name our pet dinosaur, please type it in and Michelle will tell me what your idea is. In the meantime, I'm going to take our egg and hide something in it. And we'll see if you can guess as to what I've hidden inside. All right, so you'll have to close your eyes. I'll cover the camera so you can't see. And there it is. We do have a suggestion. Uh, Aranosaurus. Aranosaurus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, uh, four-year-old Taylor. Appreciate that. Thank you. So that's our pet, Aranosaurus. That's very fun. I like that. I was thinking maybe something like George, but Aranosaurus is very good as well. All right, so I've hidden something inside of our egg. Take a look around our bin and see what do you think I hid in our egg? Should I shake it? Do you think that might give away what's inside? I think you need to shake it. Let's <laughs> see if we can hear it. We need All a right. clue. <laughs> Does anyone have a guess as to what's inside our dinosaur egg? No, not yet. Not yet. All right. Five, four, three, two. Oh, so it looks like someone has a guess. Ooh, we got one. A dino. I'll show you. Nope. Oh, rocks. Awesome. Two <laughs> rocks. <laughs> Thank you for guessing, though. So that is very fun. If you and your friends are playing with our dinosaur dig bin, that is something that you can definitely do is have them 
close their eyes and then you can hide something inside your egg. So let's see here. I'm curious how much sand will fit inside of our egg. Oh, it looks like it'll be hard um, to fill it all the way up because there's two little holes in the side here. But this is fun too, just scooping the sand just like that. Let's see if it comes out. Nope, not really. So now we have sand in here. Okay, so and another thing. Have, and Meredith, so, when you talk about like your senses, now we have the sense of sound, right? <laughs> because you can hear that yeah. sand in there. You are so right, Michelle. Yes. Yeah, so we have our sensory sand where you can run your fingers through the sand and let the sand fall through all of your fingers. And it's nice and grainy. Um, you can comb your sand. I'm going to pull out our dinosaurs to get them out of the way for just a second. And I'll show you how you can comb your sand. Come on out, dinosaurs, just for a little bit. So you can use your um, little foam volcano and you can just settle all your sand around, just like when you're at a hockey game and they drive the Zamboni around the ice to make it all nice and smooth. You can smooth out all your sand with the end of your volcano. So now we have a nice smooth surface. So what do we want to do with this nice smooth sandy surface? How about if we make some dinosaur tracks? So let's take one of our dinosaurs and you can see the dinosaur's feet here. So we can push our dinosaur's feet into the sand and make dinosaur tracks. Now they're very faint. You might be able to see them just like that. So it makes it look like this dinosaur has gone all the way over here. Now we, this dinosaur has four feet. So we'll put him, we'll make some dinosaur tracks going this way, all the way up here. And then one more, this one here with just two feet. I think this dinosaur would like to eat some plants. So this dinosaur, he kind of just wobbles a little bit. So. He only he he makes um, he makes prints with his feet, but also with his tail. So he has a wiggly track behind him, like that. Oh, I wonder if you can see that better if I magnify it. Oh yeah, that's pretty neat. Cool. So you can make dinosaur tracks. You can also smooth it out again. I'll move some of these racks. Ooh, smoothing out the sand is very fun. And it does make a really cool sound, like you said, Michelle. Now, maybe we can use our, the end of our magnifying glass and we can put someone's name in the sand. Does anyone out there want me to write their name in the sand and see how that looks? Let's see, if you would like your name written in the sand, just type in and Michelle will type, uh, tell me what your name is and I'll write it in the sand. Some of these rocks out of the way. All right, Michelle, do we have any uh, volunteers to have their name written in the sand? Um, 
Not just yet. Um, I would offer up my name, but it is long. <laughs> <laughs> How about Michelle, if you were to name your dinosaur, what would you name your dinosaur? I would name the dinosaur Derek. Derek the dinosaur. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put Derek's name in the sand. So, D, E, R, E, K, Derek. That fit perfectly. Nice. Yeah. So let's let's create a little story here with our dinosaurs and our volcano. And maybe you guys out there can help me come up with a story. So once upon a time, there was a purple dinosaur. Hello, my name is Derek. And Derek was wondering what was around for food. What does Derek like to eat? If anyone out there would like to suggest something for Derek to eat, please type it in and Michelle will tell me. Do we have any suggestions out there? We don't just yet, but That's okay. I think dinosaurs, some of them may like plants. I think you're right. Well, Derek, just like you said, Michelle, Derek really enjoys plants as well. So Derek knows that the freshest and most green plants, the ones that taste the best are just beyond the mountain that is a volcano. So now Derek has to find a way to get around or over the volcano to get his food. So let's go ahead and we can draw a little path for Derek to follow. So he can go down. And then you can go around. And then you can go over and right up to the freshest vegetable trees there are. And here's his path. So you can he can trace it back once he's done eating. Well, he'll he'll have to hurry because he doesn't want to be there when the volcano, if the volcano erupts. So let's introduce a friend to Derek. Derek, this is Gertrude. Gertrude, the other dinosaur. So Gertrude and Derek go on an adventure and Derek wants to show Gertrude the freshest vegetation there is. It's like the best tasting, but Gertrude is a little bit afraid of volcanoes. So Gertrude does not want to go over and around the volcano. So she says, hey, Derek, I know another place that has really good vegetation. Do you want to come with me? And he's like, sure. So he comes back over here and he follows Gertrude. And Gertrude shows him a much easier path that doesn't involve going around the volcano. So they both take a nice little walk all the way winding around the sandy beach desert where dinosaurs live. And they eat until their bellies are full. The end. All right, 
So you can come up with your own story um, using all of the different elements that you have in your bin, or you and a friend can come up with a story yourselves. Now, let's go ahead and see how many rocks we have hidden in our sand. All right, friends out there, do you have a guess as to how many rocks we have in our sand? If you have a guess, go ahead and type it into Michelle and Michelle will tell me what your guess is. And I know you can see some of the rocks already poking out of the sand. So you can count those. Oh yeah, we have some sand in here. <laughs> I think I'll take the sand out of here and then yeah. when, we, when we count the rocks, I'll put the rocks inside. Oh, that's a great idea. Here we go. Okay, do we have any guesses out there, Michelle? Someone guessed 12. Ooh. Someone guessed eight. Ooh. And I'm gonna guess Ooh, okay, so we have three guesses. Let's see who comes closest. All right, I'm just gonna put that there for now. We have another okay. guess of 10. 10, okay. Let's scoop up the sand and count our racks. Ooh, here's our stripey one. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Whoa, I got a whole bunch over here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, look at this little itty baby, baby one. 12. Whoa, does anyone want to change their guess? We're already at 12. Wow. Um, well, I'll go ahead and change mine to 22 because I forgot about all of those little itty bitty rocks. Mm -hmm. um, we have another guess from Taylor uh, for 16. Okay. So 16 and 22. Okay. Any other guesses? There's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Wow, there's so many rocks. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Whoa. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, we're almost there, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, oh, whoa, that's wow. a lot of rocks. Wow, and Taylor has 30 in her bin. Oh, wow. wow, this is so exciting. Thank you for sharing, Taylor. Okay, so now that we have basically everything out of our bin, we can start over with whatever we want. So if you wanted to make it all smooth again, you can use your um, 
You can use whatever you want to smooth it, but this works really well. I really like using our volcano to smooth out our sand. But if you wanted to then add a mountain of sand somewhere, you can kind of build it up like that. Maybe a mountain of sand over in the corner. And then we'll cover it like that. So now if the dinosaurs want to go on a slide, they could slide down um, the hill that we just made with our sand. Uh, we could now also, we could use the racks that we just took out and we could draw with the racks. So, I would say that maybe we could draw a smiley face with the racks. What do you think? Should I try that or should I try yeah. spelling something out? Uh, you could try that. You can try spelling out dino. You could, you could try make a flower out of rocks. Ooh, I like the word dino. D Oh, let's see if we have enough rocks to cover dino. So you can use the lines that we just drew and you can just add your rocks like this and just follow the lines to spell out your name or the name of your pet dinosaur or the name of your favorite food or whatever you would want, just like this. Wow, some of these racks are really cool. I think using your magnifying glass and taking a really close look at some of these racks, you might find multiple colors inside that you never, you never thought would be in a rack. Oh, I think, I think we'll have enough racks. Do I want a round one for up there? Here we go. Boop. This is looking really cool. I'm glad you suggested this, Michelle. And I know. I think I'll take a picture of it. It looks so neat. And so we already did our D, our I, our N, and now our O. Oh, I'm running out of room a little bit. So those friends out there who do have our dinosaur dig kit at home, how else have you played with your dinosaur dig kit? Whoa, I had just the right amount. I don't have any more rocks. Wow, cool. That's awesome. How fun. Yeah, this is so fun. And actually, if you wanted to, now you could scoop up some of that extra sand and you could cover it up again. And you can be an excavator and you can excavate by brushing off the sand to see what it spells. So that would be a very fun game if you were to write something in the sand with your rocks and then your friend would have to uncover all the rocks to see what it spells out. Wouldn't that be fun? I think it would be. A scavenger hunt there. <laughs> yeah, a scavenger hunt with rocks and words. They could give you clues as to what they spelled out. Like this is a giant animal that used to be around before we were born. And then they could guess dino and that would be right. 
There we go. You just have to brush very lightly so you don't move the stones, our little rocks, too much. Here we go. Dino is back. Cool. And then you can put some dinos around it. Our skeleton dinos and our regular dinos, just like that. There we go. And our plant as the centerpiece there. Ta da! All right, let's see what else is in the instructions. I think we gave some ideas on how to play with your dinosaur dig bin. So count the stones inside the bin. We did that. Name each dinosaur. Well, we named one dinosaur. Make up a story about your dinosaur adventure or your fossil dig. Well, we did come up with an, um, a little bit of a story about our two dinosaurs searching for food. Call out the colors of each item. Well, it looks like we have, what colors do you see in here, Michelle? Can you see very clearly? I see some blue and green and red, but my screen may be a little different than yours. Yeah, I see mostly a yellow dinosaur with some blue and green and then some red stripes on it. So yeah, you're close. Memory game. So it says, parents, hide some objects under the sand. Have your child guess what the meat what is missing so we kind of did that when I put the rocks inside of our dinosaur egg and then you had to guess what was inside um, close your eyes and grab an item from the bin see if you can identify it using your sense of touch so that would be fun imagine you are walking with dinosaurs what sounds do you hear so friends out there, if you were taking your pet dinosaur for a walk, what kind of sounds do you think your dinosaur might make? If you have an answer or if you have a thought, go ahead and type it in and Michelle can share your thought as to what sound you might hear if you were taking your dinosaur for a walk. And if maybe- you have a guess, put it in the Q&A or in the chat. Ooh, here's a good one. <gasps> Arrah. Oh, what was that, Michelle? I couldn't hear it. Arrah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, maybe Hannah meant to say, ah. <laughs> Ara, that I think, uh, or is it rar? Maybe, or maybe some stamping. Oh yeah, I hear a tick, 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 quiet dino. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Would that be maybe the dinosaur's little um, nails on the sidewalk? Maybe that could be definitely it. Or what if your dinosaur was hungry? What would your dinosaur, um, what would your dinosaur sound like if it was hungry? Oh, I think it would be loud and ready to eat. <laughs> I think the dinosaur's stomach would growl and it would sound bigger, a bigger growl than like 10 people's stomachs growling all at the same time. Wow. I won't even try to replicate that. I will. Well, you are in a soundproof studio right now. <laughs> so it also says, now use your nose. What can you smell if you were to take your dinosaur for a walk? If you were taking your dinosaur for a walk, and you heard your dinosaur's belly growl really loudly, what smell might you smell with your dinosaur? Maybe it would be 
if you guys were going to get some type of food, what food might you smell on your walk with your dinosaur? Hmm. I have to think about that. Mm -hmm. So if I were taking my dinosaur for a walk and my dinosaur liked to eat plants, maybe there's a fresh or a minty smell. Oh. Ooh, I like I like Hannah's idea of cake. I would <laughs> love to smell cake. I think that would make my stomach growl too. I think cake with blue icing would be really good actually. There we go. I'm putting more of our little dinosaurs in here. Well, that was, um, those were great suggestions and that was wonderful answers as to what you would smell or what you would hear. And as Michelle had said earlier, when you put something in your little dinosaur egg and you close it up and you shake it around, that introduces the sense of um, sound. So you've got all of these wonderful sensations that you can touch and you can see, and then you can hear. So do you have any other thoughts, Michelle, out there? Anything else we should share with our friends? No, I think we are almost wrapped up. Um, I know if you uh, enjoyed our Dinosaur Dig Sensory Bin, Michaels also has our um, ocean and sand, our racetrack, our construction, ice cream, and outer space version that are all just a little bit different. Yeah, and I've played with a couple of those and they are, they have different sensory items in them that when you touch them, they feel very different and you can have different activities with them. So um, it's definitely, if you enjoyed this one, uh, go check out our other ones at Michael's and see if there's another one that you'd like to try out. But I had a blast playing with you guys. It's always so fun to have imaginative play and come up with stories and hide things and guess. So I really appreciate all of you out there, all of my friends out there who um, responded to our questions and played along. So I can't wait to do it again and check out our sensory bins at Michael's. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day, friends.